This is Math 98. We are going to look at section 2.2, which is a technique for solving quadratics called completing the square. And um, the strategy is going to be using this to get a quadratics into a form that's easy to solve. So we'll start with some quadratic. We'll go back and fill in these details later. But we're going to do what's called completing the square to get it into a form that looks like something squared equals some number. So once we get it into this form, we can solve this. We know how to solve this. So the, the lecture after me solving this is going to be talking about how to get it into this form. But just so we can think about the last step here, I have something squared equals 20. Well, how about I square root both sides? Remember, when you bring in a square root, plus or minus comes with it. Uh, square root of a square undoes. So I've got that. And that's equal to plus or minus. I can break this up. 20 is 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is 5. I'm still working to solve for y. I want to get y alone. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I can't combine those terms. So that would be 5 plus or minus 2 root 5. And there's my answer right there. So once I have it in this form, I know how to solve it. Square root both sides and then move that over using addition or subtraction. So let's talk about then that act of completing the square. And I'll start with some, um, just some squares to think about where the pieces come from, like x plus 5 squared or y minus 9 squared. You know, if I were to multiply these out, squaring means times itself. So I would think of this as x plus 5 times x plus 5. If I multiply this out, x times x is x squared. And then notice I have a 5x and another 5x. So I basically have two of those 5x's. So that's plus 10x plus 5 times 5 is 25. So notice where these pieces came from, this x plus 5 squared. This last part was 5 squared. And this coefficient in here is 2 times that 5. Right, like if I multiply that out this one, I get the same situation. Y times y is y squared. I've got minus 9y minus 9y. So there's two of them. So minus 18y. And then negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. And again, take a peek at the pieces. This is a negative 9 squared. This is 2 times negative 9. Whoops, that should have been a 9. Pretend like that's a 9. Let's make that a 9. So, in general, if I go to generalize this, if I have x plus or minus a squared, it multiplies out to x squared plus 2 of these times x. So, 2ax plus uh, a squared. Right? And if that's negative, this ends up being negative. So, this always happens. So, if I have something that's in this form, I know I can factor it to that. And if I think about drawing this x plus 5 times x plus 5. This is an x by x, and then I'd have 5x's here, 5x's here, right? So there's my 10x's, these are x's, and then in here I have 5 times 5, which is 25. You can kind of see where the pieces come from. When we complete the square, what we do is we figure out what has to go here, and we add it in. So let's, let's think about that. If I had something that was like... Uh, x squared plus 20x plus something. I want to complete the square on this. x squared minus 14x. So I have this information, and I'm going to complete the square. So in other words, this 20 is going to have to get split up into two pieces. Right, like the middle term, it's two of them giving me that. So half of 20 is 10. So I'm just going to write this down here, 10x. And if I square 10, I get uh, 100. So when I add 100 to this, I'm completing the square. And notice then I could write this as x plus 10 squared. If I, if I think about this one, that middle term is negative 14. So I'm going to cut it in half. That's a negative 7. If I square 40, uh, negative 7, that's 49. So this could be factored into x minus 7 squared. What I'm doing again, I'm completing the square by adding in what goes here to make this into a perfect square. And I could, you know, deal with 
odd numbers too. Negative 5, half of negative 5. I'm just going to say that's negative 5 halves. And I prefer the fractions to decimals because that's easy to square. Uh, 25 halves if I square it, uh, sorry, five, negative 5 halves if I square it is 25 fourths. I can just square both the parts and this becomes x minus 5 halves squared, right? That's the part that is that over there. So that's the idea about recognizing how to complete the square. So how does this help us solve some problems? That is the question. So let's do some of these. So on this left-hand side, I have x squared plus 6 equals 40. So I want to solve this. It's an equation. I want to find the x values that make it true. And now my strategy is to try and get it written like something squared equals the number. Right? This is the form right here that I want it in because then, then I can solve that. So the way I'm going to make that happen is by completing the square. So on this left-hand side, I have x squared plus 6x, and that's still equal to 40. I'm going to complete the square over here because I want to write this as something squared, right? I want to write this as something squared equals some number. So half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Add 9. Now notice I added 9 to the left-hand side. So to keep it balanced, to keep the left side equal to the right side, I'm going to have to add 9 to the right side as, as well. So this side factors to x plus 3 equals 49. This is really clever, adding the 9 to both sides. Um, to change the form of this, keep them equal, change the form of this, and then we can solve this. Uh, I want to, I've got that square out there, so I'm going to square it both sides. So bring in that plus or minus with it. Square root of 49 is 7. And now as I go to solve this, I could subtract 3 from both sides. And notice I have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 7. And I'm not going to leave it like that. I can resolve that. Uh, negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And there's my two answers. And if you wanted to check, plug them back into here. Make sure that this evaluates to 40. All right, here is another example. x squared plus 8x equals 48. Okay, I'm going to complete the square because I want to write this as something squared equals some number. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. I'm going to add 16 to both sides. So over here, this factors to x plus 4 squared, which is nice. 48 plus, 50, uh, plus 16, 50, 64, right? Cool. Square root both sides. Plus or minus comes in with it when you bring in the square root. Square root of 64 is 8. And then we could subtract 4 from both sides. And I can combine those. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. There's my two answers. And list both the answers. Those are both the answers. I noticed some people on the, on the last quiz found the answers, all the answers in their notes, but they didn't write them in, the, they didn't enter them both. Enter in both the answers. You can enter it with a comma. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. y squared minus 6y equals 16. All right, half of negative 6 is negative 3. Square negative 3, it's positive 9. So add 9 to both sides. We get y minus 3 squared equals 25. And you know what to do from there to solve that one on out. So let's dig into some more of these. x squared minus 10x equals negative 35. Well, half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. I added 25 to this side. i got to add 25 to this side. And I noticed that I wrote 36. That should have been a 35. So this left-hand side factors to x minus 5 squared. And this becomes negative 10. And right now, if I try to square root that negative, I'm going to see that uh, I would get an imaginary number. I won't get a real number. So I'll say no real solution right, right here, right now. Let's do this next one. p squared minus 18 p equals negative 6. So half of negative 18 is negative 9. Whoops, I'm going to need a little space, aren't I? It's kind of nice about not doing it on a piece of paper. Boop. Uh, negative 9 squared is 81, so I'm going to add 81. Add 81. 
I notice that this factors to uh, p minus 9 squared equals, and this would be 75. All right, square root both sides, plus or minus comes in with it. Square root of 75, that's 5 times, 25 times 3, so that's, square root of 25 is 5, root 3. And now I can add 9 to both sides. And p equals 9, plus or minus 5, root 3. And what is great about this is uh, I can check my, my answer on my calculator pretty, pretty easily. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take that 9. I'm just going to take the positive case, 9 plus 5 root 3. So 9 plus 5 square root of 3. And I'm going to say store that in x. So the stow button, stow in x, I'm saying x is equal to that number. So now x is that. What I can do now is take it and plug it back into my original equation and make sure that it gets this spits out a negative 6. So instead of p, I'm going to use x, but I'm going to say x squared uh, minus 18x, I've just used x instead of p, equals, and it should be negative 6. I know I'm right. Um, and if one works, the other one's going to work. Uh, if you're not sure, you could just you know put it back in there and do it again. And I just did it this way, so I don't have to type that a bunch of times. If you wanted to write that squared minus 18 times that, that would be an okay way to check as well. All right, if I look at this one, it's a little different in form. I've got this 9 hanging out here, so how about I just move it over? And then you know what to do. Complete the square. Half of 4 is 2. Square 4. Uh, square 2, you get 4, so add 4 to both sides. You got b plus 2 squared equals 25. And you know what to do from there. Square root, and you are on your way. All right, a few more. So this one looks nothing like the form that we've worked with so far. Um, but what we could do is we could multiply out this left-hand side and then manipulate it from there. Like if this was equal to zero, if this was a zero, we we'd say the answers are three and negative five, right? We can just get that from factoring, but it's equal to nine. So what we're gonna have to do is multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. Uh, negative three x plus five x is two x. Negative three times five is negative 15. How about we move that 15 over? So I'm gonna add 15 to both sides. Now I will complete the square half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And that is nice because it gives me a 25 over here on the right. And this factors to x plus 1. You know what to do. Square root both sides, plus or minus, subtract 1. You're on your way. All right, now this one. We've always had a leading coefficient, an a value out here of, uh, of 1. So let's deal with that. Let's divide everything by 3 to make that a 1, and then we can go on our way. And I'm going to do it to both sides, right, to keep it balanced. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's nice. x squared minus 12 divided by 3 is 4. Minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Great. Uh, how about I add that 5 over... To complete the square for this. You could have factored this, but we're practicing completing the square. Then complete the square. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Add 4 to both sides. You end up with x minus 2 squared equals 9. And again, from here, square root both sides, plus or minus, add 1. Two more. Okay, this leading coefficient with the thing with the x squared is not a 1, so I'm going to divide everything by it to make that into a 1. So I've got x squared minus 3 halves x equals 10. Okay, I'm going to make a little space here. Completing the square, half of negative 3 halves. I've got negative 3 halves, and I want to take half of it. So it's negative 3 fourths. And if I square that, that's a 9 sixteenths. On the left-hand side, I have x minus 3 fourths squared. 10 plus 9 sixteenths. Now, you could change this into 160 sixteenths, then add those together. So you could say 10 is 160 sixteenths. So that would give us 
169 sixteenths. Uh, if those fractions give you uh, a little shiver, grab your calculator and go 10, turn it on, and then go 10 plus 9 sixteenths. It's going to give you a decimal answer, but you can say, give me the answer as a fraction. 169 sixteenths. All right, uh, we are on our way. Let's square root both sides. Plus or minus comes on in with that. Square root of 169 is 13. Square root of 16 is 4. Things are looking pretty good to me. Uh, add 3 fourths to both sides. So we've got 3 fourths plus or minus 13 fourths. And they already have the same denominator. So 3 plus 13 is 16. So that's 16 fourths. 3 minus 13 is negative 10. Negative 10 fourths. And I could reduce both of those. 16 fourths is 4. Negative 10 fourths is negative 5 halves. There's both my answers. Okay, last one. Somewhere around here. Ooh, divide everything by 3. All right, complete the square half of two-thirds. Half of two-thirds, you're just doubling the denominator, is two-sixths, which is one-third. Square one-third, you get one-ninth, so I'm going to add one-ninth to both sides. The left side's going to factor to x plus a third squared. And let's see, four-thirds, that's the same as twelve-ninths. So 12 plus 1, that's 13 ninths. And again, if you don't like that, do it on your calculator. Just go 4 thirds plus 1 ninth. Math menu, give me that answer as a fraction, 13 ninths. Uh, okay, keep solving from here, square root both sides. When you bring in that square root, the plus or minus comes with it. So I got x plus a third equals plus or minus. Uh, square root of 13 is square root of 13. Square root of 9 is 3. From here, I can subtract one third from both sides, which means I can write this as negative one third plus or minus square root of 13 thirds, which is a fine answer. It's a fine answer. Uh, but since those already have a common denominator, I, I'd probably combine them. Just something like this, negative 1 plus or minus square root of 13 over 3. All right. Hey, give those questions a try. Send me any questions that you have about the questions. Uh, either message me or post them in the forum.